Hi guys, uh, Tuesday the 11th uh, of June, uh, first day back in the office since Thursday, uh, obviously we've had uh, peers on the, the briefings and uh, I was watching them on, on Friday for the non-farm payroll uh, preview and then yesterday and there's uh, probably no one happier that the, uh, the non-farm number was as bad as, as Donald Trump. Uh, as of course everything seems fine again now just have a quick look over the markets before we come back to this guy on my right hand side uh, Boris who uh, is well in the, the lead of the, the conservative uh, leadership race uh, we'll have a look what that means for, for the pound as well going forward uh, but having a quick look over the markets obviously just saying there how happy Trump must have been with the, the poor uh, non-farm number S&P now I mean it's I know we're, we're below yesterday's high, uh, but percentage-wise from the all-time high, it's about two, give or take, yeah, 2.3% on the futures, which is incredible uh, considering just how quickly we have pushed on. And you can see that win streak coming to a brief end on the futures yesterday, but one, two, three, four, five uh, days in a row before that. Uh, has really helped push things up and the Dow Jones is is the same uh, in that reaction higher uh, well uh, the Nasdaq also so one to, to keep an eye on as we go through the the week and is this going to be sustained uh, and we do get another test of those highs has Trump had everyone in his back pocket uh, as he you know plays around with these these trade deals uh, and then last minute comes to the rescue only to see things going higher uh, I was also looking at a, a tweet from from Piers yesterday uh, in the aftermath of the briefing and the last sentence there was the one that caught my eye. Free rate cuts in 2019. So if we go back to uh, the ADP number uh, last week and the result of that being the worst since 2010, then it was priced in that there's going to be 63% chance of free rate cuts, which is uh, obviously just incredible how uh, that was priced in having been only two percent a month ago but yeah free rate cuts come on I think two cuts max and I, I would agree more uh, so with with peers there but with this being priced in and uh, obviously the the Mexico and uh, US deal um, or the, the increase in tariffs postponed it's uh, all helping here uh, stocks recover uh, you know briefly above 2900 yesterday uh, on the futures headlines uh, overnight uh, well you had the 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 well really the the aftermath of the weekend where everything gapped higher uh, that continued and, and markets in in asia continued their relief rally if you like or just the correction of the down move pricing in these negative trade headlines uh, chinese stocks were, were boosted by the prospect of fresh government stimulus uh, the CSI 300 was up 2.3 percent, so a really big recovery there. The Hang Seng 0.7, and the Australia's S&P ASX 200 gained 1.2 percent. Tokyo's topics just up half a percent, just. Uh, and of course, that followed through uh, to Wall Street yesterday. And we finished, although relatively fat, we did push higher in the morning. Obviously, helped by this rally in Asia. Worth obviously keeping an eye on in uh, nine minutes or so the cash open uh, for European equities, which uh, likewise with the US have seen a nice recovery going back to uh, the, 30, well, the end of uh, last month and the beginning of this month where we have pushed on. We'll have a look at some levels more technically speaking shortly, but you can see just where we're trading now is, is uh, well, just I guess made that gap close. So this was the level we were looking at at the back end, back end I should say, of last week. And we finally, uh, not too long ago, filled that gap. And you can see the first test of it acting as a strong resistance level, uh, but definitely one to keep a close eye on should we push back above there uh, in nine minutes uh, or so. Um, if we go back to, to the Mexico trade, I'm sure you know, this was, was covered throughout the day yesterday uh, as well. Uh, really that delay, which, you know, certainly the New York Times and other uh, publications were suggesting that the, the idea to delay this was all put back into March anyway, which uh, obviously Donald Trump came out and vigorously de denied. But those tariffs, which of course were meant to be put in place on, on Monday, so yesterday, uh, they consisted of 5% tax on all imported Mexican goods, 
and it would have risen at regular intervals to 25%. We did have this, uh, uh, certainly Navarro at the back end of last week, suggesting it was going to be delayed and, and Trump coming out as well, uh, certainly all over Friday uh, when I was you know, on the... On the plane, uh, he was very much, um, you know, on the, on the plane to where I was going on holiday, he was uh, saying how it was going to be delayed and they were they had promised to, to step it up. And uh, again, last minute, Trump saves the day. Well, that's what he will obviously want you guys to, to think. Uh, but I do still stand by what I've said before, that I do feel he has this stock market just in the palm of his hand. You know, it's going to pick up into... Uh, you know, quarter three and four of this year with the presidential campaign, it would look very, very bad, especially with, you know, the amount of imports coming from Mexico, uh, that if there was no deal, and it effectively would still, you know, hurt the, the American uh, household. Uh, I think there was a study uh, done that, that would be about $900 a year. Well, that might not seem too much ahead of a presidential campaign. That would always hurt him. So I think it was inevitable that this one was going to get sorted, as will the one with China. And he just wanted to bide a bit of time because I think if stocks had continued to go higher from their all-time highs uh, that we had, well, let's just bring up the chart again. Obviously, we peaked, if you like, uh, on stocks back in da, 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 1st of May. If we had continued to go on and on and on, well, there's going to have to be a pretty big re- um recovery of, of that push higher or correction if you like and last thing Trump is going to want is that to be in October November December when you know this market then actually would have to come back down and if we had had what we had here back then or in in the future then obviously that's not going to look too favorably uh, on the Don himself interestingly just uh, pushing away from here the dollar just trying to strengthen a touch and that is weighing on, on gold a bit here which has just come to test the low of yesterday uh, we can see that gap lower uh, as money flying into risk or out of safe havens and that has just uh, led to the gold push down but also this dollar strength perhaps just weighing on on things a touch you can see obviously the reaction following the weak non-farm number pushing things higher only to snap back down so worth keeping an eye for any gold traders just on those lows uh, equities not really uh, batting an eyelid yet but of course keeping an eye on the DAX around 8 o'clock for, for how that, that comes along. So with the, the Mexico and, and US deal, if you like, um, post uh, agreed or the tariffs uh, delayed, um, you know, Mexico have agreed to deploy more National Guard troops. So before previously only a thousand, now we're looking more at 6,000 or the pledging to do so. So Trump is happy enough with this for now. Um, and I, I think for, for the time being, it's almost a case of okay you know that story is now going to start to become old news keep an eye on, on on maybe some trump rhetoric if he starts getting a bit more hawkish and aggressive on the situation in a, in a few weeks you know maybe they haven't done what they promised etc etc then there could be some good trading opportunities none more so than the peso which of course gapped higher over the weekend really big gap here you can see this is the close that we had back on Friday and then the, the open on Sunday evening. Uh, really big push uh, higher. So if that was to you know, deteriorate, if you like, well, what an opportunity that would be for a reversal. And of course in stocks and safe havens, uh, as that risk uh, move would uh, obviously have to unwind uh, as well. But the, the peso, another positive start to this morning. You can see just coming up almost to the higher close that we had back on yesterday uh, as well. I'm sure you else have seen it this morning and you know there's talk of it over the weekend and the overnight as well. Trump saying he will raise tariffs if Xi fails to meet him at the G20. Uh, that meeting taking place, what we've now, the 11th, so taking place in 17 days, June the 28th and 29th, there has been no real public indication that, um, that Xi uh, is intending to avoid Trump at the summit but again just with the, the way these things go and any tweets from Donald Trump uh, surrounding this issue just worth keeping an eye on but at the moment it's not in it's not looking like he is going to avoid however if that was to develop you know you would look to be uh, short in uh, certainly US equities and, and Chinese equities or equities in general uh, and then perhaps looking to get long 
uh, government bonds again, which I can see have come off a, a tiny bit from Monday, but just as we're looking at the charts now, or, or I am, I should say, the Bund is on the higher the day, as is T-Notes both, with their pivot levels uh, acting as a, a bit of resistance uh, as we come into the, the European uh, Open. Um, so yeah, Trump's uh, her threatening to, to slap tariffs on another $300 billion worth uh, of Chinese exports if there is no meeting at that G20 uh, in Japan. In, in typical Trump fashion, he, he came out with all these, these comments here. I think he, he initially did a, a phone interview and then was, was tweeting it as he does. Um, I think he will go and I think we're scheduled to have a meeting. I think he'll go. Trump said in a phone interview with CNBC on, on Monday, I would be surprised if he didn't go. I think he's going. I haven't heard that he's not. We're expected to meet. And if we don't, that's fine. And if we do, that's fine. So classic Trump. And he did go on to, to make more comments about how they need a deal and, and all of this stuff as well. And I, I posted this, this article in, in the morning research. Um, uh, but you can see here another comment. If we don't have a deal and don't make a deal, we'll be raising tariffs, putting tariffs on more than... Uh, we only tax 35% to 40% of what they said, and they had another 60%. <laughs> that will be tax. So the room for more hawkish comments is there. Uh, I think that's only going to really follow through should there be any indication that uh, Xi is, is not going to attend. But I, I think for now he's, he's going to. They're going to have a chat. But that could be a good opportunity into the back at the end of the month, how that develops. Uh, does Trump necessarily want to, to to get this deal over the line just yet? Or maybe as we come into the heat of the presidential election for 2020, well, that's when he really starts to step it up, finds that last minute deal just as we come into voting and whew, timing that stock push above these all time highs could be the trade uh, to do. Just a quick look over uh, as well at that, that non farm reading. You can see 75,000 uh, was what came in. Yes, it, it, it's bad, but. In terms of stock markets, it was a good thing. It was always uh, a tricky one to trade stocks on, on non-farms anyway. Uh, the, the bad number, does this mean well, the economy isn't doing well and surely we should start coming down? Uh, or if it's bad news, well, really, it is good news. And you can see here, 130, that's the reaction we got. We came lower, uh, but the idea that actually now, surely, uh, we are going to start pricing in these rate cuts for real what an opportunity it was to buy gap higher over the weekend and you can see from the non-farm payroll release or the low of that following the 130 on friday we're up 1.7 percent so decent recovery uh, and i did see a couple of donald trump tweets regarding the dow jones having the best week or something uh, of the year or the second best week of the year uh, i guess that wouldn't be too hard when we did have the the push lower from may but he seems happy uh, enough at the moment and uh, certainly for the remainder of the week just having a look at the uh, the calendar for, for the remainder of it I would I would favor still the stocks too to push on I don't see right now though them, them necessarily having a, a bad end to it I know we're still early on Tuesday uh, but as, as things have progressed yes we've got the Wednesday uh, inflation numbers which will of course be worth keeping an eye on uh, and then we've got the conservative leadership race first round uh, on Thursday but that's not really going to have an impact on risk I would say unless um, well I'd say that would be more down the line uh, as we move on uh, to, to Friday, you can see the US retail sales as well uh, and the manufacturing production. I think even if they're, they're bad, again, you're just going to see a case of, yes, stocks come lower only to, to go higher. So negative trade talks will be the reason if there is any for us to, to come lower. But for now, it does certainly seem uh, like following the weekend, the only way uh, is, is up, uh, shall we say. Elsewhere, uh, Brexit, obviously the, uh, the, the right-wing Tories, you may have heard this, I've, I've got an article here on, on FX Street and obviously Ran, Ran Squawk uh, in their, their rundown, they mentioned it, so it's worth keeping an eye on. The right-wing Tories, 92 group hustings, recently held non-binding votes to gauge the popularity of the UK's 10 Prime Minister candidates. So of course, over the weekend, these candidates either put their, their name in the hat or withdrew if they didn't have enough support. So we came down to these 10. And the outcome is no different than general market consensus. 
that favours ex-Foreign Minister Boris Johnson to become the next PM. He's odds on with the bookies. Uh, it is worth notice, noting, though, however, the you know the last few leadership races, whoever's been the initial favourite actually hasn't won, uh, but it does seem that it's pretty much nailed on for Boris to... Uh, to, to get the get the nod uh, and of this this poll you can see he got 34 of those votes Dominic Raab not even a close second 18 and you can see as it trickles down to the, the bottom here uh, these guys very much not in the race as it would seem uh, we've we've gone over this um, this chart if you like from from Guido Fawkes I know if you don't follow him on on Twitter it's definitely worth giving uh, them a follow and this is just all the, the PM, the Conservative PMs who have put their sort of backing behind each nominee so far. And you can see Boris Johnson, and you might not be able to see because it is relatively small. Um, let me just zoom in on that. I'm not able to. Boris Johnson has many, many more than the next uh, in line, which is actually Michael Gove, according to this. So you saw that uh, 19. 92 group pace hustings sorry uh had dominic Raab second he's fourth on this list but uh yeah boris johnson uh way way in the front with backing of 67 60 or oh, well 63 of uh of those uh, mps uh, michael gove way down uh in second place on 30. Uh, so what does this mean for the pound uh i've you know, we've had this recovery, if you like, over the last few days just because of the dollar weakness, but it hasn't got away from itself, has it? In, in fact, it's, it's only just back above uh, the, well, I suppose it's nicely above 126, but not by, by much. Uh, of course, that 126 on the, the longer time frame, you had the trend line that came into play. You had the previous uh, low of uh, last year as well. And let me just get that trend line on. Uh, is it on a trend? Here we go. So as it does look like Boris is, is going to get the nod, what does this mean? Well, look, if, if no deal really starts to, to pick up, I think we still have to come lower. I've been for a, certainly the beginning part of this year a, a pound bull. Uh, however, uh, that has, has drastically turned. And a lot of Boris, you could say, is priced in. But are you really going to want to do a deal with the, the devil, if you like? Uh, we did see some... Um, uh, comments from the Guardian overnight saying EU sources indicating that the idea of Boris Johnson in the European Council is likely abhorrent to some EU leaders uh, with the source actually also critical of Dominic Raab so whether you, EU are even going to change any deal or not remains to be seen but I think it is pretty pretty clear that it's going to be a struggle either way whoever gets in uh, and October the 31st may well again uh, be pushed back. The the Conservative lawmakers, uh, just to go over uh, the run through again, uh, will hold the first found round of voting on Thursday to begin that narrowing uh, of the field. And of course, yesterday we had the uh, their you know the leaders sort of proposing what they would do should they get into into charge. And I actually got quite a few um, uh, WhatsApp messages from from my from my mates who. They seem as the, the sort of go-to on, on Brexit and markets and trade and all this. And a lot of them are, are massively happy with, with Boris Johnson, with the idea of uh, increasing that, that 40p tax bracket uh, to, uh, you know, above uh, 50 to, I think it was 80 uh, off the top of my head. And I know they perhaps, you know, they were saying, oh, I'll definitely vote for him. And, and obviously, while that's not the case, and it would be the Conservative uh, members that would do so. Uh, certainly from the idea of public backing, just doing that has, has helped uh, push him further. And maybe the, you know, the public image of him, which isn't that great, you know, might help sway things slightly for, for the future. But it seems like it's, it's nailed on that Boris is, is going to get the nod. Uh, where we go from here will have evidently come down to uh, the no deal chance of that increasing. Or is there going to, to be a, a deal uh, as well? Uh, elsewhere, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the the calendar for today. We do have some UK numbers out this morning. Uh, yesterday, the GDP weakened, uh, which obviously helped weigh on the pound a, a touch. Um, following that uh, 
9.30 release. However, we did recover into the back end of the session and we're not too far away really from where we were uh, before uh, that 9.30 yesterday. Usual slot as well today for the unemplo un uh, unemployment rate, employment change and the average weekly uh, earnings, including an excluding bonus. So that's always worth keeping an eye on. But as usual, as with recent times, good or bad, unless it's catastrophic, focus is very much going to be on Brexit uh, for pound related markets. Into the afternoon we have uh, May data from, P uh, from the US for the PPI final demand. Worth noting of course as well the UK data is from April so relatively old so I think the reaction will be short lived. Uh, into the afternoon it gets relatively quiet from a data front usually and historically. I mean when I started trading back in, in 2014 I was always told don't really get too involved on a Monday and Tuesday post non-farm payrolls. Coming in this morning, reading the headlines, choppy market conditions. And really, it's, it looks like it's going to be a case similar to that in the FX markets where not too much is going to be going on uh, because of that aftermath from Friday and things will start to pick up inflation-wise and retail sales Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, this evening, uh, we do have the API numbers out of... Uh, uh, the US for, for crude oil, so that'd be worth keeping a, uh, an eye on around that time ahead of the DOEs tomorrow. Uh, we've had a half decent recovery in oil, but the move lower has been significant. Uh, but if we were to get a follow through higher uh, over the end of the coming days, it's only going to help uh, stocks push on uh, as well. We do have some speakers mostly out in the morning or all out in the morning from a scheduled point of view. Novotny uh, has already come out, nothing really uh, of note. Uh, we're keeping an eye certainly out of the, the UK at uh, uh, 8.30 and then Bank of England Saunders at 10 o'clock as, as well and 10 Rayro uh, speaking at uh, Monetary Economics Conference. Quick look over the charts to, to wrap things up before uh, I let you crack on with your day. The DAX 10 minutes into the open, choppy as usual. Uh, you can see here uh, we went lower to come higher. I'll just be keeping an eye on that high, the, where that that gap is above that you might get a relief which is going to help stocks uh, across the pond push on as well uh, gold which we talked about earlier in the briefing pushing lower really le key level of support we're keeping an eye if we were to push on for those previous morning session lows to act as a potential level of resistance uh, as well for now uh, we're keeping an eye on the DAX to, to lead the way focusing then on US equities into the afternoon, but looking for areas to buy. So looking at the S&P here, should we get a retracement? Um, put this on the 15 minute. You can see the previous high of yesterday evening and the pivot is worth keeping an eye on, as is this low. However, the amount it's been tested, I'd be just a bit more cautious uh, and any chance to get round to S1, uh, and uh, which would also be the gap fill on the futures, I think would be a great area to look to go long as it stands. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let me know. Uh, but I hope you'll have a great trading day.